Season six is here, which means a new settings video. So let's just get right into it. I'll be honest, a lot of this stuff is still the same, but there is a few changes in here. So make sure you're paying close attention, but we're gonna start off by opening up our folders here. And once you're in your folders, we're gonna see documents on the left side. So click on documents. You're gonna see Call of Duty and Modern Warfare under here, double click that. And then you're gonna see players. We're gonna wanna double click that again. And then you're gonna see this ADV underscore options dot NII file. So we're gonna open that up. And this is what we're greeted with. And what you're gonna wanna be changing is the renderer worker count. The number Number you want to put here is half the amount of cores that you have on your CPU. So for example, I have an eight core CPU, so I put four. If you have a 12 core CPU, you'd put six and so on. But if you have less than eight cores, you're still going to want to put the number four here. I saw a lot of comments in the last video asking if I meant the number of threads is the number you want to half. And no, it is the number of cores, the number you want to half here. So once you've got that all figured out, just click file, save, and then close out of it. Now, now, I should probably mention that there was an issue with Warzone last season where you would get a lot less frames after a certain update by doing this. So all you have to do to fix that yourself is delete that players underscore ADV file, open up your game, and then close your game and the game will remake the file for you so it'll be back there and then you change the renderer worker count back to what you had it at before once you're done with that you're going to want to open up google chrome and i'm already at the page you're supposed to be at so i don't show any of my personal info but this only applies for people who use google chrome so if you don't even have google chrome on your computer don't worry about this step but if you do on this left side here you're going to see advanced so you're going to want to click on that and then you're going to see system under that tab so just click on system and it'll bring up this page and what you're going to want to do is uncheck this right here where it says continue running background apps when google chrome is closed by default google chrome is always running in the background and we do not want that running in the background because google chrome does use a lot of resources so we can exit out of that and that'll bring us into background apps so go down into your search bar and you're just going to type in background apps and open that up and you're going to want to check this off up here where it says let apps run in the background for some reason Google Chrome will still run in the background if you only check this off, which is why we did the last step. So once you're done with that, we can just close out of here. Then we're going to go back down to the search bar and we are going to type in game mode and you're going to see game mode settings right here. So click on that and you're going to want to turn game mode on. And then after you turn game mode on, you're going to want to go to this right side here where it says graphic settings, click that. And under hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, we do want to turn this on. But if you do stream or record on the same PC that you're gaming on, you might want to have this setting turned off because it could cause some issues. So just a heads up there. And then we're going to close out of that. And then we're going to go back into our search bar again. And we are just going to type mouse and you're going to see mouse settings pop up right there. So click on that and it'll bring this menu up here. And on the right side, you are going to see it says additional mouse options. So click on that. This menu is going to open up over here and you're going to want to click on pointer options up here on this tab on the top. And you're going to want to uncheck where it says enhance pointer precision this is mouse acceleration and having this on will affect your aim pretty significantly if you are playing mouse and keyboard and having no mouse acceleration will make it much easier for you to build muscle memory and improve your aim it might feel a little faster here in windows because it slows down normally like when you slow down your mouse so that is something we don't want turned on so it's gonna feel weird for a little bit but you will get used to it and then we're gonna get into the nvidia control panel so if you have an amd graphics card you can just skip ahead to the next step but we're going to open up our nvidia control panel if you don't know how to do that you just right click your desktop and then click nvidia control panel if you don't have that option that means you don't have graphics drivers and you do need to install those on the left side here you're going to see manage 3d settings so just click on that and then i'm going to scroll through all the settings really quick for you guys just make sure you copy all these settings down on your own system and then if you do update your graphics drivers just keep in mind that these settings will be reset and you'll have to change them back. Now, I've seen some people who have issues with this DSR factors. They don't know how to turn this off. All you have to do is just click on it and you're going to uncheck all these settings in here or all these different options in here and that will turn it off for you. Then go back to the left side here and click on change resolution and make sure your native resolution is selected and make sure that your refresh rate is selected here. I know there is a lot of people playing at 60 hertz when they do have like a 144 hertz monitor or higher. Again, this can get changed after you update your graphics driver. So just always be double checking 
checking this and then down here at the bottom make sure you are using nvidia color settings and then selecting your output dynamic range to full instead of limited after you get all those settings applied just make sure you save in the bottom right corner or apply them and then we'll hop into the in-game settings the first setting i want to talk about is for all the mouse and keyboard players out there so just go into your options and under keyboard and mouse you're gonna see aim down sight mouse sensitivity click advanced there and this monitor distance coefficient if you have a 1080p monitor or a 1440p monitor or 4k monitor whatever change this to 1.78 only change this to 1.78 if you have a 16 by 9 monitor which the majority of us do but if you have an ultra wide monitor you just take the width and divide it by the height so for example i have a 16 by 9 monitor so i just do 16 divided by 9 and then you get the number that you put here and it's going to make your aim feel more consistent across the board and at first it might feel a little faster but it'll feel a little snappier and more consistent so i definitely recommend trying this out some people don't like the way it feels and they'll change it back to the 1.33 default but i recommend giving this a shot and let me know down in the comments if you try this out and how you like it but then we can move over to the graphics tab and get into all the good stuff i should probably note that changing your windows settings and your in-game settings can really only take your pc so far and if you truly want to get the full potential out of your pc you're gonna have to overclock your system which leads me to today's sponsor which is sense quality they will actually custom overclock and optimize your whole pc for you and i actually did a video benchmarking the fps before and after their optimizations and i was just blown away by the results i'll link that video down in the description so if you want to get the most out of your pc i would highly highly recommend these guys it's not cheap but i mean if you've already spent two three thousand dollars on your pc why not spend the extra couple hundred dollars and get your system fully optimized and get your pc running to its fullest capabilities they've optimized pcs for half of the cdl as well as a lot of top streamers that you guys know as well as mine so that just goes to show for the quality of work they do if you guys are interested in something like this i'll link their website down in the description and you can also use code webz for 20 percent off anything on their website which is super nice and i should probably mention that they do do these optimizations remotely you don't have to send them your pc or anything crazy i get a lot of questions about that but let's just get right into the settings starting with display mode as always i always recommend full screen mode you get the least amount of input lag possible in full screen mode display monitor just make sure your correct monitor is selected obviously for your display adapter same thing again just make sure the correct thing is selected as well as refresh rate make sure you have the correct refresh rate selected there i do know there's a lot of people out there who will be playing on like 60 hertz when they really have 144 hertz monitors so just double check that render resolution we want this at 100 if you do have a 3080 or a 3090 or even this could work with 3070s and you play at 1080p you could bump this render resolution up to 121 and not really get any performance loss at all but it'll be a lot clearer the game will be a lot clearer and much easier to spot enemies but again that is for people who are playing on 1080p only and only if you have a 3070 3080 or 3090 okay otherwise you're going to lose a lot of frames by doing this i am playing at 1440p though so i will be leaving this at 100 aspect ratio we have at automatic v sync or sync every frame we want this disabled yes this can fix some of your screen tearing issues but it does cause a lot of input lag custom frame rate limit i put this to custom then i click advanced and bring the gameplay frame rate limit all the way up to 300 so it's basically like unlimited fps and that way i'm able to cap my frames in the menu so my gpu and my whole pc isn't overworking in the menu so let's collapse that then we have nvidia highlights i have this disabled we do not want nvidia recording a bunch of random double kills and all that stuff while we're playing nvidia reflex low latency we have this enabled i used to recommend enabled plus boost but having it on that option can actually cause some little micro stutters and hitching so we obviously don't want that so enabled here is the best setting display gamma most of us are going to have this on 2.2 if you do have an hd tv you could try this 2.4 and see how it looks but for the majority of us we're just going to want to leave this at the 2.2 srgb and that'll bring us down here into streaming quality which we now have on normal if you don't have the best pc in the world and you have less than four gigabytes of vram put this on low but for most of us we're going to have this on normal now for texture resolution i have this on low now if you want your game to look better put it on normal anything above normal is going to really really affect your frames and putting it on very low isn't really going to improve your frames at all which i which is why i keep it on low the way the game looks on low and normal the 
difference isn't all that huge, but there's definitely a frame rate boost there. So we are going to be keeping this on low. Texture filter anisotropic. We are going to put this on high. This makes the game pop a little more and it doesn't really impact your performance whatsoever. It's a difference of about one FPS going from the low to high setting. As well as particle quality, we are keeping this on high. For some reason, having your particle quality on high actually improves your frames. So we definitely want it on high there. Bullet impacts and sprays. I do have this disabled now because this is actually very CPU intensive. Uh, if you want to see your bullet impacts and sprays, you can keep this enabled. If you are spraying like a little heart on the ground to be toxic after you kill someone or whatever, you won't see it with this disabled. So just keep that in mind if you really like seeing your sprays and all that stuff. But if you want to maximize performance, we're going to disable this. Tessellation, this doesn't do a whole lot. We're going to keep this disabled as well as on-demand texture streaming. We want this disabled. If you have this on, the game's going to be downloading textures from the internet to your computer and we don't want that while we're gaming that could cause some lag scrolling down a bit to shadow map resolution now this is weird because shadows normally really really impact your performance on most games and on this game bumping up your shadows from low to normal doesn't seem to impact performance whatsoever and it just makes the shadows look slightly better so i'm actually playing with this on normal now and then cache spot shadows and cache sun shadows these are actually supposed to both be enabled i didn't double check this when i opened my game both of these settings will get reset sometimes when you open your game so just double check that these are both enabled after you open your game which i did not do so i'm a bad example for you guys but always make sure those are enabled then particle lighting here we want this on low ray tracing we want this disabled ray tracing is only available on nvidia 2000 series cards or higher and if you do have the option you do not want this on because this will really really tank your frames so definitely do not play with this on unless you don't don't care about your frame rate at all and you just want the game to look a little prettier but this is probably the biggest performance hog in the settings ambient occlusion we want disabled again screen space reflection again disabled and then here we got some fun stuff we'll come back to filmic strength we're gonna go over dlss first now i've tested dlss on both of my pcs my other pc has a 2070 in it and enabling dlss uh to this quality option actually really really boosted my performance by a lot at 1440p the other options made the game look really bad so i would not recommend them i mean balanced you could try it at 4k but you only want to mess with dlss if you're playing at 1440p or higher if you're playing at 1080p just completely ignore this setting it's not really going to do much for you and on my current system i'm playing on now dlss didn't actually improve my performance at all so you're going to have to mess with this one yourself to see what works best for your system i recommend just going into like a plunder match going somewhere on the map with it disabled take a look at your frames see how many you're getting go back into your settings change it to quality look at your frames see how many you're getting if you're getting a significant boost definitely keep it on if you're not then you can turn it off anti-aliasing is another big performance hog so if you have this completely off you're gonna see a lot of jagged edges and everything and it's almost gonna look like the trees are like shimmering or kind of moving in a way so a lot of people don't like that look and if you don't like that look you don't want to have anti-aliasing off but if you want the max amount of performance possible you do want to have anti-aliasing off if you really really hate that look i just mentioned definitely try the filmic smaa t2x or just the smaa t2x options but i personally want the best possible performance i can get without the game looking like complete garbage which is why i'm going with the smaa 1x option here you still do get that effect to an extent but it's pretty significantly reduced just by bumping this option up by one now if you do end up going with anti-aliasing off or at the 1x option you are going to want to set filmic strength all the way up to one and if you do play with your anti-aliasing on the t2x options either of these two top ones you're going to want to set filmic strength all the way down to zero and then for depth of field we have this disabled weapon motion blur and world motion blur we want both of these disabled all three of these options are really really gonna affect our visibility in the game film grain we want this turned all the way down as well again that's really gonna 
affect your visibility and then dynamic resolution we do want this disabled one other thing i do want to show you guys is the audio options now we've done a lot of videos testing out audio and i've come to the conclusion that boost low is the best audio setting for hearing footsteps at least with my headphones personally i do have videos that will allow you to hear all the different sound options so you can see what sounds best in your headphones we've tested boost low versus boost high as well because i know those are the two most popular options when it comes to the audio mix but in my testing from boost high to boost low boost low actually produced louder footsteps but it also did produce louder ambient noises so if the loud ambient noises doesn't bother you boost low will definitely make the footstep sounds louder let me know down in the comments if you're using boost high or boost low i'd like to see what you guys prefer but if you guys did enjoy this video make sure you drop a like and if you're new here make sure you subscribe turn notifications on and all that good stuff i'd really appreciate it make sure you keep up to date with all the socials all that stuff's linked down in the description and i'll see you guys in the next video here's the web peace